fight! Space Kappa. Welcome to episode 2 of Space Kappa in Springfield, where we are reviewing every Simpsons video game in release order. Now that we have the unpleasantness of Bart vs. the Space Mutants behind us, we can take a look at what is to this day one of the most beloved Simpsons games ever made, the Simpsons Arcade Game. The Simpsons, often referred to as the Simpsons Arcade Game, was developed and published by Konami and released in North American arcades on March 4, 1991, in between the Season 2 episodes Oh Brother Where Art Thou and Bart's Dog Gets an F. Despite being 25 years old, the game is still regarded as one of the best Simpsons games ever made, and is often held up with Konami's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X-Men arcade games as the pinnacle of 2D arcade beat-em-ups. It's clear from the very beginning that it took some finagling to fit the world of The Simpsons into a game like this, even taking into consideration how early into the show's run this was, and how even the show's producers were working to figure out how all of Springfield and its residents fit together. The game starts with Smithers robbing a jewelry store and running into the Simpsons as he tries to escape. The prized diamond he was carrying flies into the air and lands in Maggie's mouth, and instead of just yanking it out, he decides, hey, I'll just kidnap this baby. Even for 1991, the mental gymnastics required to rationalize this are mind-boggling, especially so when you try to figure out why mild-mannered Waylon Smithers, assistant to the richest man in Springfield, is robbing a jewelry store. Still, things need to be set in motion somehow in order for us to actually have a video game, and Mr. Burns is the closest thing Springfield has to a true villain. It's not hard to see why Konami thought, eh, good enough. They already had hit it big with their four-player Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat-em-up. Rolling a white-hot property like The Simpsons into a popular genre they were already good at making was a surefire recipe for success, never mind the details. Like all good beat-em-ups, The Simpsons lets you and up to three friends take control of a member of America's favorite family, each with their own method of attack. Homer uses his fists, Marge uses a vacuum cleaner, Lisa uses her jump rope, and Bart uses his skateboard. They all control the same, and the differences are mostly cosmetic, but you're still likely to gravitate towards your favorite Simpson. You fight through eight stages of Springfield, beating down tons of bad guys, and a few huge bosses in your quest to save Maggie. It all culminates in a showdown at the nuclear power plant with a bomb-throwing Smithers and Mr. Burns piloting a mech suit. <laughs> Outrageous! Since it was so early in the show's run, they didn't have access to most of Springfield's most famous residents because they didn't exist yet. Don't expect Comic Book Guy or Professor Frink to show up in this game. There are some familiar faces that pop up though, even if they look ever so slightly off-model. Then again, everyone looked off-model in the show's early years, so it's really nostalgic in a way. Not having the established cast of The Simpsons means that most of the game's goons are unique to the game, but they actually fit in extremely well. Konami clearly went to great lengths to make sure, nonsensical plot aside, that the game felt like The Simpsons. The endless hordes of cannon fodder look like background characters you see in the show, and their movements and expressions have the appropriately cartoony look to them. There's a couple cool little things to look out for, too, like how you can see bunny ears under Marge's hair when she gets electrocuted. Early on, the plan was for her hair to hide Life in Hell-style bunny ears, but this was wisely dropped before making it into the series. It's in the game, though. The gameplay is standard fare for the genre. You know what you're getting. It's video game comfort food, like a big plate of steamed hams. There's some neat additions, like team-up attacks between the various family members if they stand still next to each other, as well as the occasional minigame in between stages to spice things up a bit. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's all perfectly cromulent and still holds up well all these years later. Of course, like all arcade beat-em-ups, the game is a quarter muncher. It's really tough and often unfair. While this was an annoyance when you had to beg your parents for money in 1991, playing the game from the comfort of your own home, it's really no big deal. Beat-em-ups are the kinds of games you just kick back with and relax, not something you try to get through on one life or anything. The game was released in Japan in August of 1991 with a few minor changes. You can now fill your life bar past the maximum if you eat food when your health is full, and there are new atomic bomb weapons that clear the screen of all enemies. This is actually the version I captured footage from. I think the additions, especially the expanded health bar, make the game a bit more fun. Aside from ports to the Commodore 64 and MS-DOS in 1991 developed by Novotrade, the game was never released on home consoles until hitting Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network in February of 2012. It joined the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X-Men arcade games on the services, finally giving fans of one, or all three series, a faithful home port of some of Konami's most beloved arcade games. Sadly, nothing lasts forever, and all three games are now delisted from the services, and they can't be re-downloaded even if they're attached to your account. Welcome to the digital future.
The Simpsons arcade game is a true classic, the best of times following the blurst of times that was Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Despite shallow gameplay and being released before the series really hit its stride, the game is still held in a very high regard and for good reason. It's charming and a heck of a lot of fun, especially if you've got friends with you. I still have very fond memories of playing this at mini golf courses and at Chuck E. Cheese as a kid, so I still love being able to play it at home all these years later. If I ever have the room and the money, I definitely want to own the actual cabinet someday. Even though the Xbox Live Arcade and PSN versions have been delisted from their online services, and there's no way to get them back, even if you purchased them previously, they're still MAME, which is a great way to preserve all these arcade classics, Simpsons or otherwise, and you shouldn't feel bad about emulating a game like this because it's the only way to keep these arcade classics alive. And if you want to go back and experience the heyday of these 2D arcade beat-em-ups, or if you're just a big Simpsons fan, it's definitely worth your time. That's all I got for today, so until next time, remember, Love games, love yourselves, and love each other. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and checking out the other two video recommendations here. If you'd like to support my channel, a $1 a month pledge on Patreon will get you early access to all my future videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I'm on Twitter and Facebook as Space Kappa.